chapter 15. Linda, less is more. The best known and most controversial of our experiments involved a fictitious lady called Linda. Amos and I made up the Linda problem to provide conclusive evidence of the role of heuristics in judgment and of their incompatibility with logic. This is how we described Linda. Linda is 31 years old, single, outspoken, and very bright. She majored in philosophy. As a student, she was deeply concerned with issues of discrimination and social justice and also participated in anti-nuclear demonstrations. The audiences who heard this description in the 1980s always laughed because they immediately knew that Linda had attended the University of California at Berkeley, which was famous at the time for its radical, politically engaged students. In one of our experiments, we presented participants with a list of eight possible scenarios for Linda. Some of the students ranked them by representativeness, others by probability. Have a good look. The problem is similar to that of Tom W., but with a twist. Linda is a teacher in elementary school. Linda works in a bookstore and takes yoga classes. Linda is active in the feminist movement. Linda is a psychiatric social worker. Linda is a member of the League of Women Voters. Linda is a bank teller. Linda is an insurance salesperson. Linda is a bank teller and is active in the feminist movement. The problem shows its age in several ways. The League of Women Voters is no longer as prominent as it was, and the idea of a feminist movement sounds quaint, a testimonial to the change in the status of women over the last 30 years. Even in the Facebook era, however, it is still easy to guess the almost perfect consensus of judgments. Linda is a very good fit for an active feminist, a fairly good fit for someone who works in a bookstore and takes yoga classes, and a very poor fit for a bank teller or an insurance salesperson. Now focus on the critical items in the list. Does Linda sound more like a bank teller or more like a bank teller who is active in the feminist movement? Everyone agrees that Linda fits the idea of a feminist bank teller better than she fits the stereotype of bank tellers. The stereotypical bank teller is not a feminist activist, and adding that detail to the description improves the fit to Linda's personality. The twist comes in the judgments of likelihood, because there is a logical relation between the two scenarios. Think in terms of Venn diagrams. The set of feminist bank tellers is wholly included in the set of bank teller, as every feminist bank teller is a bank teller. Therefore, the probability that Linda is a feminist bank teller must be lower than the probability of her being a bank teller. When you specify a possible event in greater detail, you can only lower its probability. The problem therefore sets up a conflict between the intuition of representativeness and the logic of probability. Our initial experiment was between subjects. Each participant saw a set of seven outcomes that included only one of the critical outcomes, bank teller or feminist bank teller. Some ranked the outcomes by resemblance, others by likelihood. As in the case of Tom W., the average rankings by resemblance and by likelihood were identical. In both judgments, feminist bank teller ranked higher than bank teller. Then we took the experiment further, using a within-subject design. We made up the questionnaire as you saw it, with bank teller in the sixth position in the list, and feminist bank teller as the last item. We were convinced that subjects would notice the relation between the two outcomes and that their rankings would be consistent with logic. Indeed, we were so certain of this that we did not think it worthwhile to conduct a special experiment. 
My assistant was running another experiment in the lab, and she asked the subjects to complete the new Linda questionnaire while signing out, just before they got paid. About 10 questionnaires had accumulated in a tray on my assistant's desk before I casually glanced at them and found that all the subjects had ranked feminist bank teller as more probable than bank teller. I was so surprised that I still retained a flashbulb memory of the gray color of the metal desk and of where everyone was when I made that discovery. I quickly called Amos in great excitement to tell him what we had found. We had pitted logic against representativeness, and the representativeness had won. In the language of this book, we had observed a failure of System 2. Our participants had a fair opportunity to detect the relevance of the logical rule, since both outcomes were included in the same ranking. They did not take advantage of that opportunity. When we extended the experiment, we found that 89% of the undergraduates in our sample produced rankings that violated logic. We were convinced that statistically sophisticated respondents would do better, so we administered the same questionnaire to doctoral students in the Decision Science program of the Stanford Graduate School of Business, all of whom had taken several advanced courses in probability, statistics, and decision theory. We were surprised again. 85% of these respondents also ranked feminist bank teller as more likely than bank teller. In what we later described as increasingly desperate attempts to eliminate the error, we introduced large groups of people to Linda and asked them this simple question. Which alternative is more probable? Linda is a bank teller. Linda is a bank teller and is active in the feminist movement. This stark version of the problem made Linda famous in some circles and it earned us years of controversy. About 85% to 90% of undergraduates at several major universities chose the second option, contrary to logic. Remarkably, the sinners against logic seemed to have no shame. When I asked my large undergraduate class in some indignation, do you realize that you have violated an elementary logical rule? Someone in the back row shouted, so what? And a graduate student who made the same error explained herself by saying, I thought you just asked for my opinion. The word fallacy is used in general when people fail to apply a logical rule that is obviously relevant. Amos and I introduced the idea of conjunction fallacy, which people commit when they judge a conjunction of two events, here, bank teller and feminist, to be more probable than one of the events, bank teller, in a direct comparison. We found only one group that was relatively immune to the fallacy when presented with a short version of the Linda problem. Graduate students in the social sciences at Stanford and at Berkeley. Only 36% of them committed the error when the two critical options were compared directly. In the original experiment with eight outcomes, 85% of graduate students with the same background had made the same mistake. The difference is instructive. In the longer version, the two critical items are separated by an intervening item, insurance salesperson, and the reader is not actually forced to compare the two critical scenarios explicitly. In contrast, the comparison is compulsory when there are only two items, and a majority of the sophisticated graduate students answer in a way that conforms to the logic of probability.